You know, is it really right that the state takes on the burden of running those local entities, or should it be something different? I only have one vote, but that makes it more precious. Um, <laughs> so I'm just not going to uh, give it away easily. Democratic Visions is handmade by volunteers for the entire metro region by DFL Senate District 42. In early February, producer Jeff Street attended a town meeting held at Minnetonka City Hall held by Senator Terry Bonhoff, Representative John Benson, and their constituents. Because we don't have uh, any funds to give to the schools, I'm anxious to allow local uh, school boards uh, before uh, the next school board election to announce whether they want to extend a levy that the voters have already passed to reduce those uh, levy limits at least to some degree. Now that does cause a problem because some districts can't raise any money. Uh, but I represent Minnetonka, Wayzata, and Hopkins, and I at least want those communities that could um, continue with their levies, their operating levies, to do so. And that, that's a big deal. Um, if we understand the budget deficit as it currently stands... Jobs and the state's budget deficit were the most urgent issues considered at the Senate District 43 town meeting. Regarding the price of government, Senator Bonoff spoke of legislation that would enable the sharing of costs and services at city, county, and school district levels. Questions were raised about the state's local government aid or LGA program. LGA sends state dollars to revenue-hungry cities for local public safety and infrastructure needs. Uh, but I pointed out to the uh, representative that his uh, community uh, towns uh, got up to 60% of their entire budget from LGA. And his eyes got real big, and then I threw in, you know, my, uh, my city used to get nothing, so I'll vote with you. We'll just get rid of LGA entirely. <laughs> what? The conversation ended right there. You know, is it really right that the state takes on the burden of running those local entities, or should it be something different? Should it be a circuit breaker program? And should there be outcomes for that money? For example, if we say there ought to be shared services across jurisdiction and they say, I don't want to, well then, you know, shouldn't there be some adjustment in the LGA? Do you One attendee thought that tax incentives might be given to Minnesota companies to not shift jobs overseas. Another was concerned about the growing number of homeless people in Minnesota. Benson spoke about Minnesota's underfunded court system and joined Bonoff about pensions and retirement plans for teachers and government workers. So I sat down with AFSCME and they asked me where I stood on this and I said I think we ought to keep our promises that we've made to this point and then we change going forward. That we Each also talked about the alternative teacher licensure bill that was co-authored by Senator Bonoff. So I have carried that bill for two years. The first year we passed it off the Senate floor and the House uh, did not agree to it. And this year the governor put it uh, in his education proposal. Senate File 40 was signed into law on March 7th. Hard-pressed schools will be able to hire non-licensed teachers enrolled in state-approved programs like Teach for America that provide teacher training. In fact, right now we have some of these teachers in Brooklyn Park and in Minneapolis, and those communities, they're doing great, and those teachers welcome them in the classrooms. Both also talked about the controversial Republican bill that would require special voter identification. It's a bill sparked by overblown claims that there are cracks in Minnesota's voting system. Considering all the other issues we have, I, I find it one of those political agenda items that the majority party are interested in right now. But there's no indication that Minnesota has a problem, has had a problem. We're always listed as the first or the second best state in uh, running elections. And we've had a couple very close elections recently in Minnesota. We had the Frank and Coleman uh, challenge and we had the most recent, the Dayton Emmer challenge. It is clear that uh, the voting procedures were extremely accurate and we also reformed a lot of it last session. My concern with uh, going forward on this is that we don't disenfranchise people who do have the right to vote but may perhaps not have a valid ID. For example, um, the numbers are over 100,000 senior citizens don't have a current picture ID. I want to make sure that overseas Minnesotans, especially our military, 
and elderly who do not drive anymore and maybe do not have a driver's license, that they are given uh, an identification card then uh, complements of the state. But I really feel, for the most part, uh, it's a problem, uh, actually a solution, looking for a problem. Uh, I'm, I think it's silly to have that St. Paul Saints thing in the bonding bill. I was like, oh, where did that come from? Another stadium? And with regard to the biking stadium, I'm opposed to using any general fund dollars. Uh, and if there's a creative solution that's outside of that, I think it's important to keep the Vikings in Minnesota, but not at the expense of our um, people who are our most vulnerable, our children, our cities, our counties. Um, you know, I'm a Vikings fan, so. I'm not interested in having the state uh, bond for it either. Uh, I want that money for infrastructure, roads, bridges, uh, this uh, nanotechnology center at the University of Minnesota, I think those have a uh, higher priority. But if, if, if um, you know, the city of Minneapolis wants to throw in something from what they get for the convention center, or if they want to uh, put a little tax on memorabilia you buy, or even, and it's not the best source uh, really, but if they wanted to expand uh, gaming uh, to some degree, uh, and dedicate it uh, to build that or put a tax on the people who attend. I, d I don't know. I, I just don't think uh, government should be picking winners and losers in the private sector generally. Uh, to me, uh, if it were a great investment, the, the uh, Vikings themselves or private industry would be more than happy to build it. And, so and since I think they don't want to, it means <laughs> it's not such a good investment. <laughs> and, and personally, I'm Democratic Visions is handmade in Eden Prairie and Minnetonka by DFL Senate District 42. Norbert Gurness, Chair. Democratic Visions can also be seen on our website, dflsd42.org.